second sermon prepared by you. Trust that's okay. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. First of all, Father, thank you so much for joining us. Father's from Argentina. And ask if you could come celebrate. And you are most welcome. About, the story goes back a while. In 1972, I was at the North American College, and Bishop Hickey, who was the rector at the time, wanted to take a group of seminarians to Moscow, to Russia. Now, this was during the Cold War, so it was very difficult to arrange. But being the Vatican and all, they got visas for a group of seminarians from the North American to go to Moscow. And one of the sites on the trip was the tomb of Lenin. I have to backtrack a minute. Now, when you go to Russia, when you went to Russia in those days, the Soviet government was kind enough always to give you two tour guides. Okay. And the tour guides apparently were there to show you the sites, but what they were really there for were to, was to watch you, to record who you visited, and who you talked with, where you visited, and who you talked with. Well, the group had two very bright young guys, <clears throat> and one day they were visiting the tomb of Lenin. Now, there was an entire protocol to be followed, similar to here, a protocol to be followed in visiting Lenin's tomb. You had to walk in a certain way, stop, Played music, then you went this direction, you went that, you know, you did all these things. Now, these were all seminarians, and you know what seminarians are like, so one guy piped up and said, what's the big deal? It's just a tomb. And the KGB agent slash tour guide said, oh yeah, but you Christians make a big deal about that tomb in Jerusalem. Bishop Hickey, in his inimitable way, just looked up and said, yes, but our tomb is empty. <laughs> An empty tomb. That's what all that we Christians have. That's what Peter and John came upon. An empty tomb. And they believed. But I would venture to say that you guys get it better than they did. Why? Why do I say this? Well, what were the apostles doing after they saw that the tomb was empty? After Jesus had appeared to them? Well, first of all, they just locked themselves in a room. Southwestern, outside of Jerusalem. They locked themselves in. They were afraid. You men are not afraid. You're acting counterculturally and you're willing to profess faith in a living God. Now, what else did the apostles do after the appearance of Christ? We all went to the church of the primacy, Mensa Christi, with a little basalt church. It was like a little oven along the Galilee, the Lake Tiberias. And uh, what were they doing? Anybody know? Anybody know what they were doing? The apostles? Fishing. 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 Business as usual. They had witnessed Jesus alive. They know how he was killed, but they went back to business as usual. With all of us, the resurrection, especially in the case of men starting to be priests, it can't be business as usual. Your life always has to be a reflection and a consequent, a consequence of this empty tomb. 